Hey, we got Vijay Pandey and Jorge Conde here, uh, at general partners at Andreessen Horowitz on the BioFund. So we got a lightning round today. So we, you know, we're seeing all these forces of biology coming to computer science and computer science coming into biology. You know, what's the lay of land of that? Well, I think, I mean, this is, a, as we all know, healthcare is a very complicated landscape. So let's just take it at a very high level, and then mm-hmm. we can sort of dive in and go through yeah, cool. um, uh, the, sort of the various players here. So if you're developing anything in the healthcare space, and let's just focus on human healthcare for a second to put a, a, a scope on this. Um, generally speaking, if you're going to develop a technology or a tool, you're going to develop um, something that's going to enable the, a drug or a therapy, or you're going to enable something that's going to enable the diagnostic to help mm-hmm. you know, detect disease. Right. I mean, at a very high level, it's yeah. tools, therapies, and diagnostics. So let's assume that you're playing in that space. Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, and, and you're thinking quite generally, the, the d- therapy could be many different types of therapies. I guess we'll we'll see. That's right. No, uh, yeah, it could yeah, be. Yeah, it could yeah. be a, a you know a, a chemical. It could be a protein. It could be yeah, a cell. Yeah, it could be yeah. a gene. It could be an app. Yeah, right. So it yep. could be many many different yep. things. But generally, the, for the most part, if you're going to do anything that's going into humans mm-hmm. or going to affect how a hum- how disease is treated and managed, mm-hmm. um, you're going to have to go through a very a fairly straightforward process mm-hmm. in terms of, of chronology, but it's very complex underneath. Yeah. So you got to a discover something that's relevant for human health, mm-hmm. um, and that's sort of the R and D piece. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're developing a therapy or a diagnostic, then you got to convince the people that matter, in the, this case, the regulatory agencies, to allow you to put this or use this in humans. Right. Um, then you got to figure out how to get it paid for. Then you got to figure out how to educate the healthcare system that this is valuable for patients, and then you got to figure out how to get patients uh, to actually use it. Right. So it, you know it's not easy, and you know the, the yeah. joke we have: this is not B two B, this is not B two C. It's much more complicated than yeah. that. And so, you know, when you sort of dig into that, well, who are the various players there? Mm-hmm. So some of them are pretty straightforward. You have the regulatory agencies. So if you want to develop something on the therapeutic side, you're going to have to do human clinical trials. Right. If you want to develop a diagnostic, it's a slightly different path. Right. If you wanted to make a diagnostic that is quite literally, you know, a little box to test something, you got to go to the FDA. Yeah, or, or, or clear, presumably. Yeah. So yeah, now yeah. that's different. Okay. So if you wanted to develop something that could be tested in the lab, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. fortunately, the FDA has made it such that you could do something uh, called a laboratory derived test mm-hmm. in a CLIA lab. And CLIA just means that you pass sort of the basic processes that ensure that your your lab runs a good process and that, that data is reproducible, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're going to do that, that's a less less risky proposal. Right. You develop, you set up your own lab, and you can run tests. And as long as your your processes are robust, the the, the yeah. regulatory agency. And we've will seen give diagnostic uh, startups take this LDD clear approach, and that seems to be very natural to begin. I think that's I think yeah. it's a natural sort of initial yeah. approach. It's lower risk and lets mm-hmm. you get to the market more, much more quickly. On the therapeutic side, I think it's much harder, right? Mm-hmm. Because you do have to go through the tr- traditional phase one, two, three clinical trials, and before that, you have to prove that it works and in tests in both uh, you know, in, in cells and then in animals, it's a very long process. Mm-hmm. But then the other path is that you can develop a tool or technology that you sell into the R&D, R&D industry itself, which is a really interesting go-to-market path if you have a very powerful technology because it allows you to do a lot of things. Number one is you can figure out how to slice and dice this technology to sell it to multiple players in a non-exclusive right. way. Right. Um, number two, the R&D industry in the US alone is like a $75 billion a mm-hmm. year. Wow annual yeah. industry. So, yeah. I mean, there, there is a lot of spend that goes into this space. And so that's another path you can take. So if I'm an entrepreneur in bio, one of the first things I would say is, do I want to make my own drugs or diagnostics or do I want to empower the industry to make better drugs and diagnostics? Those are two very different go-to-markets. Yeah, although I, I would think, and I think we've seen, it's it's hard to break into that, right? I mean, because you've got to have a tool that really changes the game so much that they will give you some fraction of that 75 bill. I think that's exactly right. And this is where this concept of engineering uh, is important because it allows you to um, uh, essentially convince player A to give you value and Mm -hmm. without you essentially locking out the ability to engage player B and C and D because Mm -hmm. if something is widely applicable and transformative, usually you can essentially sell it again and again. Is there an example of like a tools company that became like a huge thing? Uh, sure. I mean, there are many yeah. examples. Um, I think one of the classic examples is a company called Atomab mm-hmm. that um, essentially came up with a better way to design uh, monoclonal antibodies. And so what they were able to show is by partnering with virtually every company that is trying to develop monoclonal antibodies mm-hmm. as a drug, as yep. a therapy, they could take a small piece up front. Once it proves that it works, they get a big piece of the economics mm-hmm. on the back end. And they've shown this again and again and again. And they're still a private company. And last I heard it valued well north of a billion dollars. Right. So they are a private biotech unicorn that has become that doing just that. Yeah. And I guess 
you know, to some degree, Illumina is an example as well, to the extent that it's driving research spend in addition to other areas in genomics. Oh, I think Illumina is a wonderful example, right? Yeah. Because they basically um, took what was an impossible concept of being able to sequence, you know, full mm -hmm. genomes at scale, cheaply and reliably, mm -hmm. quickly, um, and made it in not only possible, but made themselves um, uh, sort of necessary to do this. You yeah. can't do genomics essentially without yeah. without Illumina. So, you know, just I think we're, we're running out of time. I mean, so, you know, how would you sort of think of the this whole space together? What, what How do you conceptualize it? So the way I conceptualize it is it all comes down to, you know, you, your go-to-market should be dependent on your technology, mm -hmm. right? So if you have a technology that's very broadly applicable and, for example, diagnosing disease, mm -hmm. the LDT path makes a lot of sense because you can start to churn out tests um, as you sort of develop them. If you've got an, uh, a platform that allows you to develop drugs in a way that were n were n was not possible, maybe going and becoming your own drug development company yeah. might be the way to go. If you have a platform that's so broadly applicable at sort of elucidating disease biology, then doing it the partnership route might be the yeah. way to go because you'll never develop sort of the deep domain expertise in every single disease in parallel. Right. Yeah, I can imagine that, especially for you know our tech heavy founder style, uh, sorry, product style founders that just understanding the go-to-market issues from the very beginning, I think would be very important in how they define the, and shape the company and shape the product. I think that's exactly right. So the way I would think about this as an entrepreneur is do I understand what I need to prove, how I'm gonna get it um, approved, and who's gonna pay for it? And that will help define your go-to-market. Yeah, perfect, well, I think we're out of time. Thank you.